While it's true I was born in this city, I spent most of my life in Maryland, and I know we have some friends from Maryland here with us. I'd like to thank you for joining us. I know it can be kind of a frustrating journey out here if you run into beltway traffic, but uh, I want to thank all of you, really, for, for coming here this weekend. It's been a real pleasure to meet and get to know some of you better. So, how did I arrive at FCNO? Well, it wasn't so much a series of transformative events in my life. It, it was really an idea, a revelation, if you will, uh, and one that drives me. The idea came to me when I was a voter registrar at my university, registering students in 2011. Now, you'd think if you offered someone to register to vote, making it as easy as possible, if the person could vote, could register, they'd sign up on the spot. Well, I found that's not always the case. I was surprised at how often students would tell me, I don't need to bother with that, I don't need to vote. Even if I did vote, they would say, it wouldn't make a difference and nothing would change. At the time, I didn't know what to say. Sure, I could have given them some basic democratic participation is good for you uh, <laughs> idea, but <laughs> I was more so stunned at their dejection. And, well, then they would sort of just walk away, but that's neither here nor there, because that experience gave me the idea that drives me. And it's an idea that I hold close, because I want to prove to myself that my fellow students were wrong. And it is an idea that has come to fruition in my mind while working here at FCNL. Um, now I know what I should have said to those students who felt so down and out about their own voice in this country. That idea is that any individual is capable of impacting societal change, regardless of gender, class, or race, affiliation, education, regardless of levels of participation, regardless of it all. One thing that citizen advocates have in common is passion. If you have a passion, pursue it, because there's no knowing what you can accomplish until you do. I feel that there is an intolerable deficit of hope in the individual American's ability to affect change in foreign policy, among other issue areas, um, and that many people who would otherwise contribute towards an immense impact for good otherwise wallow in sorrow, disappointment, and disempowerment, keeping their mouths closed and their voices hushed. And that is a sad state of affairs, truly, truly. In a representative democracy, how are representatives to function without constant, vigilant, genuine input from the citizenry that that form of government maintains to represent. How might we expect our nation to reflect the interests of equality and peace if we don't show an expressed interest in equality and peace? And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but for them, those students, for them, for them, I probably would have wrapped it up something like this. Many disappointments may be on us. When our elected representatives don't represent our views, often it is because we failed to present them. And if there's one thing that I would hope you take away from this thought I've shared with you, it's that our representatives are receptive to our opinions, but we must offer our opinions to be received. Never forget the power of your individual voice or the exponential power of our collective voice because that is the primary responsibility of a citizen in any democracy. Never give up before you even get in the game. I.e., be socially and politically involved because that is worth the time out of your life. And I'd probably say something like, so please register to vote. <laughs> um, that's, that's what I would have said to those fellow students. And I think that's what they needed to hear. 
you know, in three months, FCNL has proven to me that it's true. Anyone can make a difference. And I hope that those students hear that message, if not directly from me, perhaps from one of you. That's all I got. Thank you.